Uh, this one, I think it has Dave and I both confused. E Frontier, it's a survival space MMO. Yeah, survival space MMO based in the same universe of EVE Online. Dave, do you ever play EVE Online? I have so many questions, guys. <laughs> This is going to be the, our first let's talk nerdy call to action. Please send help. Um, I have no idea what the hell is going on here. And I've tried to understand this. I honestly have no idea either. Um, all I know is there's a lot of negative feedback because this game. Um, what's the word? It's brick, brick something. It's like brick based or something like that. I'm blanking brick uh brick locked i don't remember there's some term for it with the game that it, it it sounds like there's a lot of bad things coming with it um like it has things to do with like nfts and stuff like that i don't know oh blockchain. yeah Bl blockchain, blockchain 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 based okay yeah we'll we'll, we'll get into that we'll so let me go ahead and pull up the trailer <laughs> yeah. Dave, but yeah i'm confused just as much as you um and like dave said i hope you guys can answer some questions for us of what this game is there's not very much out there yet, um, and I'm I'm confused. Just confusion. We are both super confused. If you guys have any insight, please let us know in the comments below. Um, we would love to do a follow-up video and clear up kind of yeah. everything using your comments here. But um, I think one thing that we most people can agree on is EVE Online. So yep. you've heard of EVE Online, right? Yep. Okay, EVE Online launched in 2003. It has since been the number one space MMORPG uh, for essentially 20 plus years, right? It's a huge game, tons of awards. There's leagues, there's tournaments. Um, the thing about the game, EVE Online, uh, it ships only, so you are within your ship combat. I think a lot of people know about that game, right? And mm -hmm. then now we're getting this announcement for this game, EVE Frontier. But prior to that, we got e vanguard which has still been announced with no release date the difference between e vanguard and e front uh online is that e vanguard you are outside of the ship it looks very much more like a first person shooter um like a battlefront or a call of duty or something like that um and then then without any announcement or re like release date or shutdown of e vanguard now we're getting e frontier uh, which used to be known as Project Awakening and has since been reformatted to fit within the EVE universe. Um, and essentially what they're saying is humanity has crumbled, you're awaking as society's last hope. Um, judging from what I can see in the trailer, it looks like there's just some key aspects of the game, number one being survival, uh, number one being some type of combat system, and number two is your building, which they're saying you're... Uh, central building blocks of this game are using dark matter that you harvest from wormholes. I'm so confused. Okay, so EVE Online is still going. That's ship-based only. EVE Vanguard still announced no release date outside of your ship. Now this game, EVE Frontier, announced no release date. Are you inside your ship? Are you outside of your ship? What like do all of these kind of interwork with each other? Are they all three separate things that just kind of work within the universe? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's happening. I think that's where I'm confused too. Or is it, I thought the way I was kind of reading it and understanding it is it's like you get your own like space station, like like your own little like world where you have this access to take your spaceship out and do all these things but i could be completely wrong but that's the way i kind of took it and read it yeah because they're saying like number one is survival so you're going to have mm. to be able to survive in this universe which i mean if there's survival aspects of the game that means you got to get out of the ship right yeah right y you're right it means you got to get out of the ship at some point but they're also saying that there's a very fierce tactical and skill reliant based combat system so like that feels like it needs to be in the ship right 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 because of this the, the we've already seen vanguard outside of uh, like show outside of the ship combat system so that feels like you need to be inside of the ship and then also this building and harvesting system i don't know this kind of feels like what no man's sky turned into you know what I mean? I just don't know. I, I've been trying to 
I'm just confused because I also never played Eve online, so maybe that's why I don't have much of an understanding with those games as well. But I just don't know. I really don't know. They do have a play test coming up on September 27th, so right around the corner if you would like to sign up for that as well. Um, but overall, I think a lot of players are very skeptical of what's going to come with this game, especially the fact that it's blockchain and things like that. And it actually caused a lot of concern of the future of EVE Online. People are worried about what's going to happen to EVE Online if this game fails or or if it does really well, is it going to take over EVE Online? I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of questions, and I think... I think there's a lot of 50 50 right down the board on this because the one thing that I do really understand is the Eve online players having concern of how this game, especially being blockchain and the thing the elements that it's introducing, how it's going to affect Eve online. Um, the number one thing that I think is really kind of important when we talk about Eve frontier and if this actually happens, this really could kind of change a lot of what gaming is for the future um whether that be for the for the better or for the worse but they were kind of saying that this building aspect is like an open-ended platform they're calling it a smart assembly where you're able to construct and program infrastructure within a, a said space essentially what that kind of reads to me is like third-party devs or people with like programming and software like a co and like coding ability i feel like they're gonna have the ability to kind of like create assets that are going to work in this game which is a game within a game that other people can like use so. right yeah and if you if you're able to do code and like sourcing and like if you're like a like a small dev or just a part-time hobbyist or something like that you could introduce assets into this game that like actually make a difference, like really important assets. And now it's good because it's great that the community can get a hold of the game instead of waiting for developers to like update things and, and you know, like add something in there that people really want. Like somebody can literally just take a, you know, a Saturday and Sunday and load that asset in, which is great. Right. And it like gives us kind of a hands-on feel as being creators in the game which I think is really cool. That's going to kind of, you know, if this works, it's going to mean something for gaming in the future. The bad part about that is, is a lot like Adam said, with this being blockchain based, uh, this is going to work off the, um, the web three blockchain tech. So it's cool that we can put these assets in, but let's say I make a really cool ship that, you know, people really want and enjoy and like they really want to own the ship. And then all of a sudden I put that on blockchain on, on the web three blockchain for like a hundred real world dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's, that's where it gets kind of, yeah, that's where it gets kind of crappy. Right. Especially. And I think that's what could kill the game in general, because I know there's people that will put money in like that and, really invest their time their money into games like this but for like the casual person like i'm not going to put a hundred dollars towards a game that will give me just a spaceship and i'm the one person that owns this virtual spaceship like i don't care i like you you like physical things in your hands not a digital spaceship or anything like that and that is a big concern for not just us or it's a big concern for a lot of people worried about this game. That's why I said it's kind of split 50-50, right? It's like people are really excited to be able to have this be a part of gaming, but like also on the same coin, like people are very not excited to have this happen, right? Because, all right, you're 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 allowing third-party developers to come in um, and just, you know, like your weekend warriors of programming to come in and create assets and load them into the game. That's great. There's a specific, like, when you let a developer that's putting out a title put together or something, there's a very specific um, price point that you're kind of expecting on a game. Now, when we look at games, we're looking at $39, $49, $59, $69, right? Those are, those are kind of regulated just based on industry standards. The problem with the blockchain is there's no regulation on industry standards. So if I make something really sweet, like I said, I could load it up for $300. You know what I mean? And it's like gaming, gaming is great because gaming is kind of accessible 
to everyone. Now, I know consoles and PCs and stuff like that are very expensive, but once you kind of like, once you get the initial startup hardware, there's going to be some gaps on players that have a lot of money and players that don't have a lot of money based on the things that they can do. But it's not, it's not terrible. You know what I mean? There's free games available. There's, you know, you like the things that you buy aren't super expensive to, you know, upgrade characters, stuff like that. This is going to widen that gap a lot where like very gamers with a lot of money are going to be able to just explode past everybody else. And that that's possibly a problem, not only for this game, but for the future of gaming. And my other big question is like, what is like, what's the point of doing like the resourcing things if you can just buy the stuff, like to buy the the new spaceship or the base and the towers and things like that? Like, what's the what's the rationale of needing to buy find the resources and things like that to survive when I can just buy the stuff? Okay, and now this is where their statement comes in, right? Because what Eve is saying is that this is they they want to they want this to be known that this is not a blockchain game. This is just a game that uses blockchain, and I think that's where they're trying to kind of manipulate things and say like, listen, we have a game in place that is standalone. If you don't want to buy anything off blockchain, you don't have to, but to me saying that you're not a blockchain game saying that you're a blockchain game and saying that you're a game that uses blockchain is the same thing yeah it's the same thing it's just i don't know it's like they're saying that they're a blockchain game but like also releasing themselves of all liability at the same time like they found a very like pr friendly way to talk about this that's what it sounds like to me interesting Hmm. Yeah, it's very, very, it's very, very interesting. And especially in a game like this, right? Because like, have you looked at EVE Online anything? No, not really, to be honest. I was like watching gameplay of EVE Online, right? And I want to say EVE Online gameplay looks gorgeous. Like it looks amazing. It really does like the, the space aspects and stuff like that. But I was watching somebody who never really played eve online before get into it and just the amount of ui that was popping up of like things that you had to learn and things that you needed to do and like they do this to your ship you need to you okay you need to you now now it's opening up skill trees and i'm just like i am just flabbergasted at this point you know like there's no way that i could get into this game it's one of those games that i just like i miss the boat on and i would just feel so overwhelmed trying to even step into it in the first place and then you know now you get to this aspect where it's like all of that piled on okay then also you have to worry about buying physical assets from a blockchain from web3 blockchain tech i'm just like i don't know who this game is for anymore Uh, it's 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 tough i don't i don't know very much about this one and i feel I feel so bad because we're supposed to know all the, like we were supposed to talk about these games and from an understanding where we know everything. But this one, I am like just lost and I'm so confused on what is going to happen with this game. What's going to happen with um, EVE Online in general. 100% transparency here. Um, you know, like Adam said, we like to report on these games and give you the best information that we can and put all this information together so that you know what these games are about and what to expect. This game specifically, we wanted to bring to the community and ask for your help. Like, I literally want to know what is Eve all about? Like, what are these games all about? Because, you know, like I said, this whole idea of an open ended platform for third party devs to come in and just create assets for the game, it could be really big for gaming. So, I think this is, I think this game is kind of a big deal, regardless of whether it does well or not. I think if this game just even launches and this this open ended smart assembly platform that they put together works, I think you might start seeing other games start to adopt this, which is going to be kind of big for gaming. So yeah, if you guys have any information, drop it down in the comments below. If you if you have any way of making sense of this, um, we would love to hear it. And you know, if we get some some feedback and it all checks out and everything looks good more than happy to do a follow-up episode on this one and just kind of put it all in perspective